I've always had a passion for it, but it was challenging. And it was good because it keeps you busy and it keeps you focused and it challenges you as a person. And it's so nice, or for me, at least, it was so nice to see new things about yourself and learn things about yourself and have that those moments where you can say, oh, I can do this. I, I actually can do this. So yeah, I would say if you're going to make a change, just make sure you're not making a change because you want it to be easier. It's something challenging that will still fulfill you. Welcome to the Midlife Reinvention Podcast. I'm your host, Kavita, and the founder of Power Purpose Play, a global community of women in midlife. I'm here to tell you that it's your time now to rediscover what has always been inside of you and bring that out into the world. If you're wondering what's next, but don't know quite what that is, or if you feel a twinge in your heart telling you that you have so much more to do and so much more to offer, you're in the right place. Ask yourself, if not now, when? Do you want to leave your job? Start your own business? Take control of your health? Reignite the passion in your marriage? Write that book, or at least that first chapter? Transitions like this can be daunting, but through listening to my story and interviews with incredible women every week, I hope to inspire you to take action. I rediscovered myself after the age of 50, and I know you can too. It's my time now to help you do just that. I'm so excited you're here. Let's dive in. Hi, my friend, and welcome to another episode of the Midlife Reinvention Podcast. I hope you're doing really well. It's so hard to believe, actually, that we're into June now with the warmth and excitement of summer just around the corner. We've had a wonderful last few weeks with friends and family celebrating so many things. My sister's 60th birthday, my dad's 90th birthday, the birth of our new grandniece, as well as another niece's wedding. And needless to say, it's been busy, but I'm so grateful grateful for all of it and for you, my wonderful listeners. And I really just want to thank you for being here. So I've also been very busy and so fulfilled working with my clients on their transformative journeys. There really is nothing more rewarding for me than helping my clients achieve their dreams for themselves and to help them uncover the obstacles they perceive that are in their way and create a plan of action with them with confidence. I am also really excited to build into my coaching practice an important tool, which I am now certified in, called HALE, which is an emotional reframing technique created by Linda Rossetti. Linda will be on the podcast in the coming episodes, and we will discuss this important concept, which helps individuals through upheavals in their lives. I'll also be running group coaching programs in the fall, so stay, stay tuned for that. A lot of exciting things are happening, but as always, I remain here for you. If you are going through a bit of an upheaval right now in your life, maybe unsure of where to begin or even what you want, maybe a change in your career or life and you're confused, book a call with me and let's chat. It's no cost or no obligation but I can help you reframe what you may be going through to be rather than something to fear, something to be excited about. This week's podcast episode covers a very important topic that you may be facing and which hopefully will inspire you on your journey of healing. Dr. Jean Marie Retief speaks with me today candidly about her journey of navigating mental health issues and career changes. Her story of how she integrated her previous career background into creating something new despite her panic disorder is a wonderful lesson for us all, that we can seek serenity, yet still experience the adrenaline rush of creating something new. Enjoy this episode, and I'll be at the end with her key takeaways. Welcome, everyone, to this week's episode of the Midlife Reinvention Podcast. I'm your host, Kavita Ahuja, and my goal with this podcast is to inspire you to realize your true inner power and potential, and to live this next stage of your life to the fullest. 
If you may be going through transitions in your career or life and wondering what's next, I'm here to tell you that you can do this. And I want you to believe and say with confidence, it's my time now. To this end, I interview incredible women for this podcast who share their stories of reinvention and who will give you their advice on how to overcome the obstacles in your way to reach your vision for yourself in this next stage of life. This week, I'm super pleased to have on the show Dr. Jean Retief. When Jean turned 35, she experienced great change, contemplation, confusion, frustration, and joy. She invested so much of her energy in becoming an expert in her field, but realized that the career she had built with a single-minded focus no longer fulfilled her or inspired her. It was a confusing and frightening realization. Facing a health and soul crisis, she decided to make a big change. She integrated her human rights background into Figi, which allowed her to seek serenity and still experience the adrenaline rush of creating something new. This is what Figi is to her. It is her best life. It is her Figi life. So welcome to the show, Jean. How are you doing today? Oh, thank you so much. I'm so good. And I'm so happy to be here. I love your introduction. It's so beautiful. And I subscribe to that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, you have such a beautiful smile and presence. And I know that you are, um, you're South African, but you live in Portugal yes. right now. So I love the fact that we can connect all over the world through, I know some people say, oh, technology, but this is just really is amazing that we can uh, connect with people all over the world. So I really appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for having me. It really is so nice that we can almost yes. be in the same room, but I know. in different <laughs> countries. <laughs> it's crazy. So Jean, I wanted to get into what Figgy is, but before we do that, I kind of alluded to it in the introduction and that um, something had kind of changed and happened to you as you turned 35 and which led you to change the course of your life and your career. So can you tell us about that and what happened to kind of I would say maybe trigger your reinvention. Yeah, I think it was just, I call it the breaking. It was just an amalgamation of so many things that I had not taken care of and that I had not recognized and given space to in my life that all came together in this one point. Mm -hmm. So in 2015, I was diagnosed with panic disorder after having suffered with anxiety issues my entire life. I just didn't know that it was panic disorder because I had suffered some emotional trauma during my childhood and also as a young adult and all of these things kind of caught up with me leading to the diagnosis but post-diagnosis I had a really hard time accepting it and accepting mm -hmm. that this was my new life and how it changed my life so I tried to bulldoze through it and just kind of bargain with it and act as if it didn't happen. And then when I turned 35, it was the same year we immigrated to Portugal. I was at an absolute breaking point. What I was doing to mismanage my panic disorder wasn't working anymore. Mm -hmm. And I had severe health issues. I was having panic attack after panic attack on like a rolling basis. and. I was having a lot of crisis with my identity because we had moved to a different country and I have to do mm -hmm. something different with my career. So it was all of that that just came together. And that's why I call it the breaking because mm -hmm. I just broke. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it seems as though it, it was a, a bunch of things that all happened at once. And, and, and that's these triggers that can cause us to kind of evaluate our lives. And in your case, having the diagnosis of the panic disorder and then moving and then you know, what was it about your career that caused also was part of it was that part of it or what were you doing before and yeah that was part of it my PhD is in international human rights and criminal law so I founded a human rights consultancy in South Africa that when I moved here had been running for over a decade successfully we did a lot of global projects and the plan was to also move that to Europe, to keep the South African based and the Africa office and then open one in Europe. And my husband was 
bringing his company here to open it. And for him, it went great and everything was fine because he already had all of the foundations here. And for me, not so much. Hmm. So what I didn't realize at that time was I was already carrying so much baggage because I was working such horrific hours in my human rights consultancy. There was a lot of secondary trauma. I didn't work in easy environments. And then when I got here and it struggled to work, I had this whole crisis of, it's not to be vain, it's just to understand that you see yourself as a certain something or someone and all of a sudden you're not. So I went from being Dr. Jean-Marie Retief, being invited to president's inaugurations for seeing that the voting was free and fair to just Jean, Hoff's Mm. wife. So everything I had built and everything I had worked so hard for all of a sudden was nothing and I was nothing. And I know when you look at it from the outside, you can say, oh, no, but you weren't nothing. It's it's not that. But in that moment, you feel that way. And mm-hmm. it's really hard to find your, your grounding in that time. It's so interesting. Thank you for sharing that. It's so interesting because as women, especially, we we play these different roles, right? Like we have different roles in our lives, whether it's because, I mean, in your case, you were Dr. Jane Retief when you, you, you played that role and probably played it very well, but then there's other roles like wife or, or mother or whatever it is, but, and they can cause a lot of stress because when we try to live up to those expectations of what that role looks like or should be, then do you agree? I mean, it creates a lot of, a lot of stress, but so, So then what happened? So you decided after this breaking point in your life, you decided to create something new. Tell us about that. What does it mean? It's an interesting word, figgy. And how, tell us how that came about and what what the mission is. Yeah. So during this time, it was really, it was a really bad time for me and a very confusing and emotional time for me. And I had so much love for my consultancy because I was so proud that I had made that work. And to understand that I was now no longer able to do it or what I was trying to do to make it work wasn't working was a big, I felt a big sense of failure in that. And then this mismanagement of my panic disorder, the stress about the uncertainty It just led to this moment where I had to decide, is this what I am going to be and do? Am I going to cry myself to sleep every night? Am I going to stress myself in circles about something that at this moment I can't change? Or am I going to take this time to really look inside and see, okay, where are my problems rooted and stemming from? And how can I use this time to become a better person for myself and for my family. And that's when I realized, like, although I loved what I was doing, it was so counter to my nature, because I was always fighting, fighting for the right to do something, fighting the political red tape, fighting the bureaucracy. And I'm not that kind of person. I'm very peaceful. I'm very serene. So it was so I was I happened to be good at it, but it was so against everything that I am. And then I thought about Figgy and I thought about my history in human rights and all of the women I met in my position that felt the way that I felt but like me didn't feel like they could say it because in a professional environment you're then seen as lesser than or Mm. not as good as or oh you're stressing too much or you're too sensitive so you don't say it, but you do feel it. You feel run down. You feel unsure. You feel like you just need a space where it's okay not to be okay. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to create that space for women. And that's how Figgy was born. Wow, that's beautiful. That is really beautiful because I love what you said is that you had that question, is this what I'm going to be or do? I speak about that a lot with my clients, for example, and I A lot of times when we are doing, doing, doing things, and like you said, it's count that what we're doing right now could be really counter to who we are, right? And so, and then you start questioning yourself and your abilities, and then 
there comes a point which you did where you look, you have to look inside and ask that question and yes. see how, what you're, and, and it's amazing that you took what you did in your past career and moved it into this, but also were able to identify who it is that you want to serve and, and why, right? So, yeah, I think that's a big question. Is this, is this what I'm going to be or do? I think yeah. that's a, it's a really big question, right? And especially, it's important. Especially if you integrate it with illness diagnosis like this, yes. because mental illness has such a stigma around it. And it's not like you have a broken bone. You can see you have a broken bone. You need to mm-hmm. take medication to, you can't see it. And then often it's misjudged. Mm-hmm. So a big part of my problem was also from the pressure it put on me to hide that di- diagnosis and the shame I felt around that. Mm -hmm. And the ways that it still does impact my life every day. Is this who I'm going to be? Is this my life now? (laughs) Am Mm -hmm. I ever going to be normal again? Mm -hmm. So it was, it's related to the diagnosis as well. And then tying in all the career uncertainty and everything. Yes. (laughs) Yes. I I was going to ask you about that because I mean, you're very open with it and, and I appreciate that because a lot of, a lot of people do suffer from abuse and, and panic disorder and, you alluded to it a little bit, but how could you share? How did these experiences kind of shape you? And how did you, I know you talked about it a little bit, but how would you advise people to really kind of, despite these, these illnesses, kind of navigate kind of a successful life regardless or in spite, or yeah. maybe you have to just learn how to live with them. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I still struggle. It's, Every day you wake up, you have to start over and try again. And for me, it worked to just try and get to a space where I'm okay with if I have a bad day, it's just a bad day. Mm -hmm. I am going to have relapses. It's going to happen. It's just the way that I'm wired. But to feel guilty about that and to feel down on myself about that and to wonder what I could have done differently to avoid it makes it so much worse. I went from having... 30 bad days in one good day to two bad days and 28 good days. So if that's a day that I wake up and I think, okay, today the best I can do is focus on surviving, then that's okay. Today Mm. I'm going to focus on surviving. But to say that I have advice for others on how to do it and still live your life, it's so difficult to say because everybody in this situation is led there for different reasons and what works for you may not be what works for me. And that's why I am so against how to advise because Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it really stunted my journey to healing a lot because it puts so much extra pressure on me to do things the right way and see things the right way and think about things the right way. So I just would say, find what works for you Mm -hmm. and don't be too hard on yourself because Mm -hmm. all these things that tell you, oh, I found the secret recipe. You'll never have a panic attack again, or you'll never have. For me personally, that's not true. Mm -hmm. It's Mm -hmm. if you've been diagnosed with it, this is the way that you're wired and whatever you need to do to make peace with that and to be kind to yourself when you do inevitably have a relapse. That's what really changed the game for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So true. Yeah, it's 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 hard. Sometimes it, people think there's a one size fits all answer to everything, but it's it's absolutely not true, right? Yeah, yeah. but we but I think what we can do is is by listening to stories like of people who have gone through it and see how they've kind of dealt with it, then that might trigger something within our own lives that maybe you now maybe this is something that I can try or maybe not. But it's good to to, I guess, listen to how other people have have dealt with it. And I guess I wonder is if did you're changing your career and creating Figgy, was that part of kind of, did that help you in your healing process? And would you say that, how would you say to other women who are maybe like looking at a career change, for example, or who are thinking, "I'm, I'm not really quite happy with what I'm doing. However, you know, all these other things, obstacles come in our way that mostly coming down to fear of how do we actually do this new thing? And what would you say to this woman who are looking at starting something new like you did? I mean, I think it really did help me in terms of 
two things. It has been a cathartic experience for me in terms of talking about my abuse history because I never really talked about it. And getting over that point where you can, the more you talk about it, the more almost normal it becomes. And the more normal it becomes, the more you're okay to make peace with it. Mm -hmm. The same with my diagnosis, talking about it more removed a lot of the shame for me that held me back. So when I decided to make this career change, I think the one thing I said to myself was, look, changing this because you think it's going to be easier or make your life better is the wrong reason to do it because nothing worthwhile is ever going to be easy. You're always going to have obstacles. Mm -hmm. So I just said to myself, if you feel like leaving behind the consultancy, choose something else that will challenge you. Don't choose it because it's easy. So, I mean, I chose my first product range to be skincare, which is so completely different from my legal background. And I went back to school and did my cosmetic chemistry certificate. And I've always had a passion for it, but it was challenging. Mm. And it was good because it keeps you busy and it keeps you focused and it challenges you as a person. And it's so nice, or for me, at least it was so nice to see new things about yourself and learn things about yourself and have that those moments where you can say, oh, I can do this. I, I yeah. actually can do this. So yeah, I would say if you're going to make a change, just make sure you're not making a change because you want it to be easier. Mm. It's something <laughs> challenging yes. that will still fulfill you. Yes. I can attest to that because when I made a change from, you know, going from the corporate world to this, what I'm doing now, it was definitely challenging because it's a whole new environment, a whole new way of working. It's, it's challenging, but it's also very invigorating, I would say. Yeah. Right. So I think that's great advice because you don't just do it just so that because life, you want life to be easier because it probably won't become easier, but it'll definitely become, I would say more fulfilling. So, so tell me a little bit about what does Figgy mean? It's amazing that you went back to school to pursue this and tell me a little bit about what it is. So figs are my favorite fruit. And I was sitting under my tree thinking about what should I name this venture? And I played around with the name fig and I got to figgy. And when I looked up the symbolism for it, it said that figs stand for reminding us that we are co-creators of our universe and that we are all here to serve each other and to share in each other's creative energy and to build each other up. Like we're a community. And that was exactly what I wanted Figgy to be for other women like me who Uh, have struggled, still want to achieve. And that's how I got to Figgy. That's beautiful. It just seemed like it just fit perfectly. And then sometimes yes. these things, we put them out there and then the idea just comes. And it's like, yep, that's it. <laughs> you know? yeah. 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 That's wonderful. That's really wonderful. And so you you had, I, I, saw, I read a quote that you said that you say that there is no secret to happiness. Life always happens. Yeah. So maybe you can explain what that means to you and what it lessons that kind of share, what, what lessons you can share from that. I am an intense perfectionist and it in many ways contributes to the level of anxiety I experience. And that's what I was saying about the how to advise. When I was first diagnosed, I went into overdrive. Okay, how am I going to fix this? I'm going to read every book that exists. I'm going to follow all the rules that the doctors are giving me. And I'm just going to, I'm going to be, this is so easy for me. Mm -hmm. I just need to follow the steps. Right. And then you inevitably make a mistake or you go wrong or you relapse. And then you start thinking, oh, it's because I wasn't positive. Oh, it's because I didn't do my grounding exercises. Oh, it's because of this. And then you get so completely down on yourself. Mm -hmm. But what you forget is for me personally, it feels like a lot of these books are almost written in the perfect universe. Every day, life throws things at us, curveballs that we don't expect, like that you can't possibly prepare for. And that's difficult for any human being. Mm -hmm. But if you have a diagnosis like this, it's even more difficult because anything that kind of shifts your world on its axis is a real big Mm -hmm. (laughs) no-no. So trying to live in the state of there's a secret 
to happiness and there's a secret to make life easier and better just really stunted my journey to healing and acceptance and now I just try to remind myself that things happen every day I don't have control over all of them I'm Mm -hmm. probably going to freak out when they happen but I can tell myself that it's okay it's just life it's Mm -hmm. It's not the end. It's not <laughs> yes. the biggest crisis. It's just life. And yes. life will sort itself out again. Yes. It's interesting you say that when you were talking. It just brought something up. And in, uh, in recently we talked about this earlier. Is I had uh, like so my parents had a health issues. And I had to kind of, in the last six months, you know, life is just had to take care of them. And yeah. so you can't comp- you can't prepare for those kinds of things. Right. And, but I actually was thinking about it the other day and it's like, if you have that kind of internal peace in a way, like if you have that internal knowing that everything is going to work out fine, like I kind mm-hmm. of always say that to myself, everything where it's going to work out just fine for you. Right. Even and if you actually truly believe it, then I think whatever comes your way, I mean, it's going to be hard. It's unexpected, but it, it gives you a little bit more ability to deal with it so that's how I deal with it but yeah it's true you know you you can't prepare for everything so yeah and it's also about taking the pressure off because right right right. I think we put so much pressure on ourselves to do it right and to Mm -hmm. get it right and to have all the pieces of the puzzle together yes and it just takes a little bit of the edge off to to know it's it's not all our fault (laughs) (laughs) That's great. That's really good advice. So Jean, you had said that Figgy is for every woman like me who has struggled, achieved, and still seeks professional and personal purpose, which is beautiful. It was really beautiful. Why did you choose skincare to, to accomplish this goal? Hi, my friend, Kavita here. Do you often feel blocked from moving forward? We all feel that way at times. These are referred to as energy blocks. I've created a short, actionable PDF guide to help you release your negative energy blocks. Click the link in the description to download it now for free. Now, let's get back to the episode. So I felt that I wanted to not only create this community, but offer a product that could help in your kind of self-care journey. And I've always loved skincare. I've always thought that I would have done this in a second life, but it's very closely linked to my panic disorder because one of the main symptoms of my panic disorder is extremely sensitive skin. And I already had sensitive skin before my diagnosis and now it's worse. So when I moved to Europe, I never realized all the products here have so much fragrance and essential oils and my skin cannot handle that at all. So when you're dealing with a high stress level, super sensitive skin, which you are completely aware of the whole time because it's your largest organ, you know, when your skin doesn't feel good, Mm -hmm. at least I can give this one thing that can make mm. your life just a little bit better. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's really beautiful. And and tell us a little bit about the skin line. Like what, what are some of the products? So it's a really minimalist skincare routine, which is essential for sensitive skin because you really have to take it down to the basics. So it's a double cleanse and two moisturizers. And all of the products are made with South African green rooibos extract, which has so many scientific proven benefits. It's an anti-inflammatory, it's an antimicrobial, it soothes, it calms. And these have been, there are so many studies on it and so many benefits from also drinking the the tea, cancer preventative and so on that have all been proven. So it really is honestly a line that is completely dedicated to people with dry and sensitive skin, because it's all about bringing your skin back into a healthy balance, soothing it, calming it, moisturizing Mm -hmm. it. And that's all I wanted to achieve. And you have. So congratulations for that. Thank you. How is it doing? It's doing well? 
Yes, thank you. Yeah? People Good. really, really love it. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Well, we'll definitely have links so people can go on your website and try it. And if there's any questions, I'm sure you can reach out to you or whatever. But I wanted to talk a little bit about, you mentioned a little bit about self-care and their self-care journey. And tell me a little bit about your belief on that and maybe what kind of things you do for self-care and how that might lead to some kind of balance in your life internally. Yeah. So I am super frustrated with the word self-care at the moment. Okay. And okay, like sorry. everything, <laughs> no, no, no. But everything, in, we go into these phases, I think where we have such an amazing source of information on the World Wide Web and everybody's trying to tell you how to do it. It's a diet. It's a how-to book. It's a this and not that. It's, And I just feel like not everything needs to be that complicated. Self-care right. is really just caring about the space that you occupy and the energy you share with others. That's all it is. It's, mm. it's not all of these complex things. It's, yeah. That's all you need to concentrate on. So how you achieve that and how you get to the state to, to do that is up to you. I like to have small moments in my day that I can commit to because I can't always meditate for 15 or 20 minutes. And mm -hmm. it's in any way better for my anxiety if I have few one minute sessions a day in which right. I just do a quick grounding or I just move my body to get rid of my anxious energy. It's because mm -hmm. it, it builds up and it mm -hmm. stores mm -hmm. itself. I also love to do a really short grounding exercise before I leave the office just to make sure I don't bring any of that energy home with me because I've seen the way that it interacts with my family and then mirrors back to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I just try to not bring any of that frustration into yes. my house. Yes. And another thing I really love doing is the moment I come into the house to put my phone in a separate room and leave it there overnight. Oh, that's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> Really? All night? Yeah. Wow. I see a really big difference in my anxiety levels if I don't have mm -hmm. digital interaction at night. Because mm -hmm. I think you just worry and you stress if you see that email coming in. Even if you don't read it, you're still thinking about it. Yes, yes. So I yeah. just try to do as much as I can, the best way I can throughout the day. And when I come home, I put it in a different room and yes. I try not to have any kind of screen time. It just makes you more present in what's happening in your life, in in real life, not in the in the digital life. That's a great advice. Yeah. I uh, and I agree with that. I mean, self that word self care has kind of become like a thing. You know, ten ways to self care. Yeah. <laughs> it's like five tips on how you can self care. And it's like it drives me crazy too, because I love that definition about caring about the space that you occupy. That's really beautiful and. Yeah. And it's, it's about, well, how do you care for yourself and what works for you? And I think that seems to be a theme and what, what you believe is, is it's not a one size fits all, but it's, it's about understanding yourself and, and working with what you have and not being too hard on yourself as well. And just accepting that you can have good days and bad days. Right. So, yeah, that's yeah. exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. That's wonderful. It's it's so great. So tell me a little bit about what you're doing now and tell me about your plans for Vicky and what's happening in your life and moving forward. So at the moment it's all full steam ahead with Figgy. We are launching a brand new website next week. Oh, that's um, exciting. Yeah, <laughs> because we wanted to offer also customers the chance to try the line before they, they buy it if they wish. So there mm -hmm. will be options to order free samples. And the blog is doing well. I post every week where I share a lot of personal stories. And we have the My Figgy Life podcast with recurring yeah. guests every week. And I'm working on two new products to add to the Figgy line, which will be targeted treatments for sensitive skin. 
Wow. That sounds like a lot. Yeah. <laughs> You're taking one day at a time, are you? Yeah. <laughs> I, hope. No, okay, I have to. <laughs> yeah, that's wonderful. That's really exciting. So if you can tell us again, the name of the podcast and your website and how sure. people would find you. So yeah. you can actually just find everything on figgylife.com, F-I-G-G-I life.com. And it will link you to the blog, the podcast, the shop, the subscription, the goddess yes. subscription, everything you need. <laughs> Goddess subscription. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> well, that sounds wonderful. I think uh, I'd love to. I, I I might try it myself. I'd love to. I'd love to uh, see how that, that works because uh, I mean, everybody, every skin is different. But I love it that it's for women who have that sensitive skin and just need that extra nourishment and care. So that's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Tia. Is there anything else, any any kind of last comments you'd like to kind of share or any thoughts that you might have at this moment? No, I'm just so grateful to have been here and to have spoken to you. I really, really love your podcast and I love your message and I connect with it so much. So thank you so much for having me. I appreciate that. I really appreciate it. your honesty and your sharing your life story and what you're doing now is very inspiring. And that's what I hope people who are listening will get out of it is that no matter what kind of obstacles you have in your way, there's ways, there's ways to deal with them and and do what you understand, what you really love and and go for it. So you're a testament to that. So thank you for sharing. Thank you so much. uh, Good luck (laughs) with everything. Good luck with the new website and and all the new exciting things that are going on in your life. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. I hope you enjoyed this podcast episode as much as I did, as Dr. Jean Marie Retief's authenticity shined through, and she gave us valuable insights into managing life with mental disorders and career and life changes. Here are her key takeaways. Number one, ask yourself, is this what I'm going to do and be? Am I going to take this time to really look inside and ask, where are my problems rooted from? And how can I use this time to become a better person for myself and for my family? Number two, mental illness still has such a stigma around it. It is misjudged and there is a pressure to hide the diagnosis and shame around it. Number three, every day you have to wake up and start over and try again And you have to be okay if you're just having a bad day. If today the best I can do is to focus on surviving, that's okay. I will focus on surviving. Number four, find what works for you and don't be too hard on yourself if you have panic attacks or mental illness. Whatever you need to do to make peace with that and to be kind to yourself, that's what you need to do. Number five, the more you talk about it, the more almost normal it becomes. And the more normal it becomes, the more you're okay to make peace with it. Number six, nothing worthwhile is ever going to be easy. You will always have obstacles. If you're going to make a change, just make sure you're not making a change because you want it to be easier. Do something challenging, which will still fulfill you. Number seven, FIGS stand for reminding us that we are co-creators of our universe and that we are all here to serve each other, to share in each other's creative energy and to build each other up. Number eight, self-care is really about just caring about the space that you occupy and the energy you share with others. Thank you so much for listening. And remember, if life is throwing curveballs at you, Be kind to yourself and give yourself the space to heal. Seek out help, whether it's from your loved ones or from a professional. If you need guidance navigating life and career shifts so that you can achieve the vision you have for yourself, or if you even need help finding that vision, book a call with me. I'm here for you as your coach and guide through life's challenges. Remember, my friend, say it with confidence. It's my time now. Until next time, stay well and stay safe.